What's up guys? Welcome to Straight From The Chest. My name is Justin Groth and I am your host. Man, those of you who are listening online, you can't, well, for those of you who are listening on Apple, I should say, or Spotify or SoundCloud, wherever you're hearing me from, you can't see me, but I'm actually wearing a different shirt. My dad was teasing me the other day saying, because he watches the YouTubes, why are you always wearing the same shirt? He didn't say that. He didn't say it like that. But he actually told my mom, he said, tell Jess to, <laughs> to get some new shirts because he wears the same shirt every time he does a podcast. And I mean, he's partially right because I do wear uh, relatively the same type of shirt every time I podcast. Uh, and that's just because I like, I'm a basic dude. I just like t-shirts and jeans. I like v-necks. Uh, and I, I like specific types of v-necks. I don't like any v-neck. I don't like the v-necks that are, that are just not hemmed on the v-neck. They, can, they, and they end up baconing and all that. No, I don't like that. I want a nice v-neck that's hemmed around the v. And anyway... I'm just basic, man. I like I like the basic things per dress code. And um, I, I've always been that way. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I haven't always been that way. I think that I've kind of relished in who I am with that recently because I've realized I just like that. I don't like I don't like anything else, really. I mean, unless it comes to my fitness clothes. My fitness clothing is a little bit different. I like a little bit more flared my fitness clothing. And I'm in that 90% of the time based on, you know, with, with regards to my job and then I and then I, my, my own training and everything. And a lot of my fitness clothes are really comfortable. So anyways, I, I'm really, I'm always, almost always in fitness clothes. But I'm in a new shirt for this podcast. I can't tell you how long this is going to last, Dad. I don't know how long, how many, how many times I'm going to do a different shirt. <laughs> but um, anyways, this is for you. So, and that honestly, that honestly brings me to a point here, guys. I think there's a lot of us who really don't know who we are yet. And I think, you know, you can say you do, but I would argue that if you're 24, you don't. Because I remember when I was 24. I didn't, and I thought I did. And I'm not trying to be like that guy saying, oh, Sonny, you don't know who you are, because I'm not that old, man. I'm only 36. And even if I was 50, I still don't think I could say that, because we're constantly evolving, we're constantly changing. changing. Well, at least that is the hopes, you know, but those are the hopes, rather. But I just feel like I've came into this understanding that I'm just a basic dude. I don't like a lot of flash and flair, at least with my clothing. I'm not a jewelry guy, I'm not a watch guy. And I think I tried all that in stages of my life because I thought that that's what I wanted. I thought that that was, you know, really what my, what I liked and I, I really, had to come to grips with that's that's not what I like. I don't like that. But regardless, I think it bears merit to understand what you like and to stick with that. Because realistically, that permeates through your being, who you are, what you like, and being confident in just being that way. You know, we all like different styles of clothes. We all have different hairstyles. Look, you walk out in the day for the day and you think your hair looks good. And that goes for everybody. For the most part, when you go to the grocery store and you see somebody and the way their hair is done, that means they literally looked in the mirror and thought, yeah, I like that. That looks good. I'm leaving. <laughs> That's true. And, and you don't think of it like that way because you're like, that's, that's their hairstyle, whatever. Like it doesn't affect you, <clears throat> but that's how everything should be, right? Like it shouldn't affect you how anybody else presents themselves. It shouldn't affect you with how people talk, 
what they say. It's their opinions. And their opinions are of the masses. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Like you should have your sights on who you are. You should have your sights on your identity and you should be trying to actively make that better. You know, there are, there, I, I really facilitate within a prism of routines, but they're my routines and they're what makes me better every single day. There are things that I do. Some of them are OCD derived and I hate them, but it's hard for me to detach from them. And that's just the truth, honest truth. And there are other things that I do in place by discipline because I've adopted a certain type of responsibility that I do not want to abdicate. I do not want to absolve myself from that responsibility because it makes me better. And it doesn't have to do with anybody else. And nobody should give a shit about what I'm doing. Just like I shouldn't care about what they're doing. Opinions should not matter. Sadly, they do nowadays. And sadly, we're going in a different direction, but that's not the title of this podcast. That's not the premise of this podcast. That's not what I'm here to talk about. What I want to do, what I want to talk about, what I want to illustrate is, and I really want to just ask you a question. Why do you not know yourself yet? Or do you know yourself yet? That's a big question. And that's going to, that's going to actually lead you into a multitude of other areas of your life that are probably uncovered. If you have, if you don't know that what you like to wear for one, or maybe you think you do, but really in hindsight, you're wearing what the latest trends are because you want to stay up to fashion. And that's really what it is. You need to, I think you need to check yourself and you need to check other areas of your life because you don't know this or you're probably, you're probably unaware of this, but you're, you're actually trailing in a path where you're only cultivating what other people find acceptable, not what you find acceptable. And you're going to call, you're going to be really, really resentful and despicable later on in your life. If you don't get these things corrected, you're living for other people, other people's acceptance and that's so to some degree that's honestly understandable but acceptance for what you wear acceptance for how you talk you're just essentially taking what they want what she wants what he wants and you're just becoming a big amalgamation of other people and you're losing yourself in the process It should be a pursuit every day, not on only on top of what you want to do with your life, but really sometimes people find what they want to do when they're actually real with who they are and what they like. And it stems from what you like, not what other people like, not what other people's opinions are of you, because everybody's going to have their opinions. Everybody. And guess what? They're never going to stop consistently perpetuating your life. Even if you find what you like, and even if you're bold enough to come out there and be who you really, really are, not who someone else wants you to be. But even with all that, they're still going to have something to say about you. They're still going to have something to say about you. Even if you do what you think they like. So you might as well go out boldly living in you and everything that you are called to not only be, but like, and that's important, man. We talk about all the time, call, be what you're called to be, do what you're called to do, right? Like do that may seem like, you know, rudimentary and it really is, but grasping what you're called to be is not any frivolous and meaningless task. And it's hard. It's a trial and error process but be who you're called to be, right? And then really be bold enough to do the things that you like. And I bet you, you find out more of who you're called to be by, by being bold to live in the things that you like. 
They may seem like they're not tethered, and but they are. They are so tethered. And I think that we don't put enough of an emphasis on that tethering because we just see it as like, well, I, just, I like to do that, but I, you know, whatever. I like to do that, but, but I also want to fit in. So I, I don't want to do a lot of this because I know that to fit in in this group here, I can't be a lot of this. I have to be a little bit more of what they are. And then, man, I, maybe I'm telling you this. Maybe I'm telling you something that you need to hear, but maybe I'm telling you you need to be in a group of your own. Maybe you weren't called to live in that group. Maybe you were called to actually plant a group of your own. And maybe other people are going to want to be attracted to that group. But I mean, if you don't go boldly out in this world, and I'm not just saying by you, I'm not saying go out and be just this big, you know, horrendous voice of opinions everywhere because you think that's being bold. No, that's being idiotic. You can have your ideologies. They don't mean anything. I mean, they do, but they don't really when it comes down to brass tacks here. I'm saying be bold enough to live in your unique signature. And that is basically proven off of your wardrobe, the way you wear your hair, the way you talk, how you live every single day. And try not to just blend with everybody. That's a harder task than it seems. That's much harder. Because now you're calling yourself to stand out a little bit, stand apart. And most people, myself included, it's a fear to stand apart from the masses. But there's something liberating in that. And I'm not talking about, you know, you know, dis dispensing with your own grandiosity and, you know, or conceit or arrogance. I'm not talking about that. I'm, there's something liberating about letting go and fulfilling your identity, your own signature. There's something liberating about that. And do little bits at a time. You don't have to do it all at once, but working onto that pursuit, I think is just as meaningful as working on to your legacy to what you're called to do, to answering the call of passion, of purpose. That's tethered to it directly because that is your identity. And that's how people are going to recognize you for who you are. And sometimes you're just a basic bitch, right? Sometimes you're just basic like me. I'm just a basic bitch. That's how they like to say it, right? But I am, man. And I'm cool with that. Sometimes I wear my hair a certain way. People are like, that guy thinks he's Johnny Rocket or something. Whatever. That's fine. <laughs> I like the way it looks. Doesn't matter what you like, man. But here's the thing. If I was... And I speak on this position because I used to be a kid that would try to fit in. I think we all do it. I mean, very, very rarely do you find a kid that doesn't care. And he's just himself, he didn't care about what it, you know, very rarely. And I think those are the kids that you actually look up to and try to be like. Isn't that, isn't that weird how that happens? It's like, you don't want to be the guy that takes the bold stance and is who wears his hair a certain way or wears a certain type of clothing or whatever. But then you sometimes gravitate towards that because there's something with uniquity that draws humans towards it. It's captivating. It's captivating. So even though you don't want to be the guy that's or girl that's bold and sits outside of the realm, you want to gravitate to the one that is. All the while, they're just being themselves. They just don't care as much as you do in the regard of people's acceptance because they've already accepted themselves for who they are. And that's why that's so powerful. Being able to stand apart and still feel accepted. I hope that you take steps in trying to stand apart and still know that you're accepted.
The exception doesn't have to come from people. It should be implicit in your being. And it should be something that you know is directly tethered to who God has called you to be. Done.